Hello 1P and welcome to your lesson on ratio and proportion. Our goal today, I can solve proportional relationships using a variety of methods. So, ratio and proportion. Ratio and proportion is one of the most useful skills that you'll get from your math class. Um, there are proportional relationships all over in everyday life everywhere in every job and everything. Uh, so being able to solve a ratio and I'm going to go through a bunch of different ways to do it. We're going to go through a couple ways today and then uh, the next lesson uh, you will learn some algebraic ways. We're not getting away from algebra either. Sorry about that. Um, so here are some situations from various walks of life that you might use a proportional relationship for. Um, so, here's one in nursing. A pediatric nurse or children's nurse is working in the OR, that's operating room in case you didn't know, following a child's surgery. The dosage of pain medication says 5 milligrams per 100 kilograms of body weight. How much medication should she give a 15 kilogram child? Okay, so she has instructions for 100 kilograms. She needs to reduce it proportionally uh, for a 15 kilogram child so that she doesn't give too much medication. Uh, the next one, you decide to paint the living room in your house. A gallon of paint will cover about 375 square feet. You calculate your living room walls to have a surface area of 525 square feet. And you're using a dark color so you'll need to use three coats. How many gallons of paint do you need? So this is one that you may have to use um, just in your own house. You don't want to buy too many gallons of paint and waste money, especially if you need to get it mixed because they won't give you your money back um, if you buy too much of a paint that you have to get mixed. Uh, next one, to open your swimming pool. If you have a swimming pool, you might need to calculate this one. You need to treat it with an algicide. These words are running together here. Uh, this says an algicide. My program's doing weird things here to get rid of algae growth. The package says that you need to use one cup for every thousand gallons of water. How many cups do you need for a 22,900 gallon swimming pool? Okay, These are all proportional relationships and there's various ways you can solve them. We're going to be looking at a few different ones. So we're going to start with this example. Um, it's slightly different numbers than the one that we had up here, but the same thing, a uh, child's medication. Example one, a child is given pain medication based on how heavy they are. The dosage says two milligrams for each six kilograms of body weight. How many milligrams should be given to an 18 kilogram child? So we're going to set up the ratios and there's two ways to set up a ratio. Um, we can have a multiplication relationship between two ratios or inside two ratios. So we're going to set this up and I like to put some words down to say what part of the ratio belongs to what. So this is um, the drug per body weight. So I'm going to write j down just drug and the amount of the drug I'm going to put on top and on the bottom we're going to do body weight which I'll just abbreviate to BW. So if I set up my relationship I have two milligrams of the drug, so two, and I'm going to put the milligrams beside this drug so that it's not actually in the question. I know what it's based on here, uh, and now I'm just going to have numbers here. And body weight is in kilograms, so I'll put that beside here. So milligrams per kilogram. So the dosage actually says two milligrams per six kilograms. So there's my initial ratio, two per six. Now, I have to set up an equivalent ratio. We worked with equivalent fractions, so you should know how to, uh, what is up with equivalent fractions. Um, where does, what other information do I have here? I'm going to highlight my numbers in this question. I've got 2 milligrams, 6 kilograms, and here's another one, an 18 kilogram child. So that's the only other number that I have here. And what am I looking for? I'm going to take a different color here. How many milligrams? And in this case, we're talking about milligrams of the drug, the pain medication. Okay, so we want to know how many milligrams. So it's this thing that we're missing right here because that's, I'm putting milligrams of the drug on top and this 18 kilogram is going to go on the bottom. 
Now I'm going to set it up on the other side too, exactly the same setup, 2 sixths equals what over 18? And here's how we're going to look for our relationship. Uh, we're going to look for a relationship between the ratios. And by between the ratios I mean going from one relation, one ratio to the other. So 6 to 18, what do I have to multiply 6 by to get to 18? Or what do I have to do to 6 to get to 18? That is times 3. So I'm going to have to do the same thing to 2 times 3. And since 2 times 3, and we could actually put a variable in here. We could call this uh, x, and then down below we'll say x equals 2 times 3, which equals 6 milligrams of the drug. Now, inside the ratio is if we look at this way. If I go from 2 to 6, if I go from 2 to 6, or in this case I need to get from 18 to the question mark, so I should actually have my, my arrow going the other direction, because it needs to go the same direction um, as the one that we're trying to figure this one out. So what do I have to do to 6 to get 2? And the answer there is I have to divide by 3. So over here I have to divide by 3. If I have to divide by 3, then, and let's put that, let's put our x in here as well so that we have something to refer to. Uh, I'm going to say x is going to equal 18 divided by 3, which is 6 milligrams. So we've got two different operations here. I've got the 2 times 3 and the 18 divided by 3 to give me the 6 milligrams and we had two calculations but it got us to the same spot. So we're going to be looking at a few more examples um, and trying to figure them out between ratios and inside the ratio. Uh, so this one again, and I find it much more helpful to actually set it up as a fraction. Now you can do it between the ratios and leave it in ratio form, but I find it much easier to go 6 over 18 equals 30 over 90. Now what are the multiplication relationship between the ratios? Well this is what it means. What do I have to multiply the smaller number to get the bigger number? Uh, and in this case that's going to be times 5 times 5. Now there is actually a division relationship between those two ratios as well. If I take this ratio uh, 6 over 18 equals 30 over 90. The inverse is true here. To get from 30 to 6, I have to divide by 5. And to get from 90 to 18, I have to divide by 5. Now feel free to use your calculator to find the relationship here. Now what about inside the ratios? What's the multiplication relationship inside the ratios? Here's what I mean by inside. I'm going to set this up again. 30 to 90. And again, since it's asking the multiplication relationship, we go from the small number to the big number. So I'm going to draw my arrow from the small number to the big number. Small number to the big number. Now here, the multiplication relationship is times 3. Because 6 times 3 gives me 18. And 30 times 3 gives me 90. Now there is also the division relationship. Because wherever there's a multiplication, there's a division taking us back to where we started from. Division goes from the big number to the small number. And it's the reverse of multiplication, which is a division. To get from 18 to 6, I have to divide by 3. To get from 90 to 30, I have to divide by 3. Okay, so we want to find the missing number, and we're going to do that uh, in any way we know how. So, uh, let's set it up. 7 over 10 equals something, let's call it an x, over 40. Rather than just a question mark, let's actually put our variable in there to, to stand for the unknown. Now, is there a relationship within here, from 7 to 10 or from 10 to 7? Not a very good one. Um, but going across, this is a better one here. To get 
to go from 10 to 40 and that's the way I have to go. I have to go from 7 to get to x so I want to draw my arrow the same way. From 10 to 40 is times 4 and from 7 to x is times 4. So our x has to equal 7 times 4 which is 28. So this was a relationship between the two ratios. Uh, how about over here? 3 over 21 equals something over 49. Let's call it an x again over 49. Now here's a relationship within the ratio. Um, it's And we may have to go backwards here because I want to go from 49 to x. Okay, so always look at what you're trying to find. 49 to x and 21 to 3. So then you ask yourself, um, in order for me to turn 49 to, into x, I have to figure out how to turn 21 into 3. And to turn 21 into 3, I divide by 7. So I have to do the same thing on this side, divide by 7. So my x is going to equal 49 divided by 7, and this slash mark means divided by. And 49 divided by 7 is in fact 7. So I figured out what that value of x is. Okay, here's another one. Find the missing number. Now I've already given you <coughs> a variable there. In this case the variable is p. Um, so 18 over 30 equals 21 over p. Now let's set up our relationship. I either have to change 30 into p or change 21 into p. So I either have to find a relationship going from 18 to 30 or I have to find a relationship going the same way as this arrow from 18 to 21. Now I don't see any real nice relationship but we might be able to reduce something to lowest terms in order to find that. This 18 over 30, there is something that goes into top and bottom. 6 goes into both 18 and 30. So if I reduce this, if I divide top and bottom by 6, 18 divided by 6 is 3 and 30 divided by 6 is 10. Now my new relationship is 3 tenths equals 21 over p. And again, I have to either turn 10 into p or 21 into p. So I need to figure out can I turn 3 into 21 or can I turn 3 into 10? Okay, Where is the relationship, the easiest relationship? And hopefully you can see 3 into 10 is not a nice one. But 3 into 21, I can change 3 into 21 fairly easily because 3 times 7 gives me 21. So I have to do the same thing here times 7 in order to change the 10 into the p. So I need p equals 10 times 7 which equals 70. So I found that by reducing to lowest terms first it, it made my life easier. Now I have a couple of uh, questions here that are word problems and we have to, the, the nicest thing here, or the best thing to do is to highlight the information that you have. I've got um, these numbers. I've got a six and a two dollars and a six dollars. So now I've got those highlighted. I know where my numbers are. Let's read through the question. Ming was planning a trip to Western Samoa. Before going she did some research and learned that the exchange rate is six tala. That's what they use for currency in Western Samoa for two dollars Canadian. How many Tala would she get if she exchanged six dollars? Okay, exchanging six dollars is kind of silly. I hope she would change, take a little bit more than that. But let's have a look at this. The two things that we're working on here, we have Tala and we have dollars. So that's where our relationship. Look for the two things that are being compared and then write down some words. Uh, write down Tala compared to dollars so that you know what your relationship is going to be. And then look for the complete one. Here it says 6 Tala for $2. That's the exchange rate. So 6 to 2. You could write 6 to 2, but I find that fractions 
putting it top to bottom is easier to see the relationship. Now we need an equal sign. And where am I going to put this six dollars? Well, it's dollars. Dollars is on the bottom. So we need to put the six on the bottom. Now we're going to look for a relationship either across or between the data, or between the ratios, sorry. So I have to change six into x. That's what I have to do. Um, or I have to change this six into x. Uh, so it's looking like there's probably not going to be a whole lot of difference between the two. So if I have to change 6 into x, I have to figure out how I changed 2 into 6. How do I change 2 into 6? I times it by 3. And if I times it by 3 there, I have to times it by 3 up there. So my x actually equals 6 times 3, which is 18. So we could get or not we, but Ming, Ming would get uh, 18 Tala. A car travels 125 miles in three hours. Let's highlight our numbers again. 125 miles in three hours is a big ratio. And here's the other piece of information, five hours. How far would it travel in five hours? So again, we're going to start by writing words down. What are the two things we have here? We have miles and we have hours. So I'm going to write those down, miles and hours as my ratio. And now I'm going to fill in numbers. Okay, I'm not putting an equal sign here. Just beside it, I'm just writing this down to get my head around the fact that I'm putting miles on the top, always, and hours on the bottom. Now this five hours, where does it go in the other scheme of things? Well, it's going to have to go here on the bottom because that's where hours goes. And now I need an x here. So can I figure this one out? What do I have to multiply 3 by to get to 5 is what I need and then I have to multiply 25 by that to get to x. Now this is going to be a little bit messy but what do I have to multiply 3 by to get to 5? To find that I just use the calculator. What do I multiply 3 by to get to 5? I find just by going 5 divided by 3 which is a nasty number so I'm going to leave that on the calculator. So if I have to multiply 3 by that number, so 1.6 repeated, so this is times 1.6 repeated, I have to multiply 125 by the same thing, by 1.6 repeated in order to get my x. Um, so I'm going to take this, it's still on the calculator, I left it there, I'm going to multiply it by 125 times 125. So it looks like 208.3. So we can write down x equals 125 times 1 1.6 repeated, which equals 208.3. And I'm going to put a dot above there. That's an approximate value. And the very last one, the scale on a diagram is 1 to 250. This means that for every unit on the diagram represents um, 200, that should say 250 units in real life. If a tree measures 4 centimeters on the diagram, how tall is it in real life? So we're going to say diagram. The two things we have here are the diagram and real life. So this one says one unit on the diagram is 250 units in real life. So here's our full ratio. One unit on the diagram is 250 units to real life. Scale always goes that, diagram to real life. Uh, and on the diagram, the tree is four centimeters. So we've got four centimeters here. And we don't know what this is. Okay, this one's going to be pretty straightforward. To get from one to four, I have to multiply by four. So to get from 250 to that unknown value x, I have to multiply by 4. So x is going to equal 250 times 4, which is 1,000 centimeters. And hopefully you know that 1,000 centimeters, there's 100 centimeters in a meter, so this is going to equal 10 
meters. And that concludes this video.